Today's video is on the apocalypse. What might surprise some and disappoint others is that the apocalypse literally means the book of Revelation. If you go to the Bible dictionary under apocalypse, it will say, see Revelation of John. If you go to the Revelation of John in the Guide to the Scriptures, it says that the Revelation of John, i.e. the book of Revelation, is also known as the Apocalypse, a Greek word meaning revealed or uncovered. To say the Apocalypse is coming is to say that the events in the book of Revelation are coming. Okay, let's start with who John was. Here's a little quiz to see if you know who wrote the book of Revelation. Is it John the Beloved? Yes, it is. Is it John of the Peter, James, and John? Yes. Is it John the Revelator? Yes. Is it John who lived on the Isle of Patmos? Yes, that is where he saw the vision that becomes the book of Revelation. Is this the John, the one who never died? Yes, it is. Is this John the Baptist? No, that is a different John who was beheaded by Herod. Is the John who wrote the book of Revelation the same John who wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John? Yes, it is. Is this John the son of Zebedee? Yes, it is. Was the John that wrote Revelation one of the original 12 apostles? Yes. Is this John known as one of the sons of thunder? Yes. Is this the John who was the brother of James? Yes. And finally, is this the John referred to as, quote, the disciple whom Jesus loved? And the answer is yes. That's the John who wrote the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. Remember what it says at the end of the Guide to the Scriptures. It says, this is John revealing the beginning to the end, the entire plan of salvation. This is important because John was the one charged with giving us this history, including and especially the end of the world. 1 Nephi chapter 14 is where Nephi is told explicitly that John would be given the task to write the entire plan of salvation and that Nephi was not allowed. The brother of Jared was also told something similar in Ether chapter 3. Many prophets were allowed to see it, but only John was allowed to write in a book that we would read. Clearly, the Lord wanted John, in John's special writing style, to be the one to write the entire plan of salvation. Bruce R. McConkie said, If you have already fallen in love with John's presentation of the plan of salvation as it is set out in the Apocalypse, you are one of the favored few in the church. He goes on to say, in my judgment, the Gospel of John ranks far ahead of those of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. At least John's record of the life of our Lord is directed to the saints. It deals more fully with those things that interest people who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost and who have the hope of eternal life. But even ahead of his Gospel account stands this wondrous work, the Book of Revelation. I find this statement fascinating. Bruce R. McConkie held the book of Revelation far above the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and even head of John's own Gospel. Notice both the Guide to the Scriptures and Elder McConkie call the book of Revelation John's version of the plan of salvation. The book of Revelation is the only book of Scripture that covers the entire plan of salvation from the pre-mortal council all the way through the final war, judgment, and the kingdoms of glory. There are lots of other books that cover parts of the plan of salvation, but only the book of Revelation covers the entire thing. This is very unique. So often we are caught up in the imagery of beasts and dragons and destruction and trumps and seals that we don't zoom out and realize the nature of this book of scripture. To understand this better, I did another video just on understanding the book of Revelation, which I'll put a link to here. Unfortunately, the term apocalypse has taken on a life of its own in popular culture. The scenes that John outlines in the book of Revelation have led to not just a skewed view of the apocalypse, but an expansion to the original definition. What was once a singular definition now has become the name of any catastrophic event. This expanded definition is further evidenced by just typing in the word apocalypse into a web browser. The images won't shock anyone because we are so used to them. 
But while most people conjure images such as these while hearing the word apocalypse, in reality, the book of Revelation is a story of hope for the righteous. Sure, the wicked need to fear, but the righteous do not. Further confusion occurs through a lack of understanding around specific events in the book of Revelation. This is especially true for those in the world that don't have the benefit of modern-day scripture and revelation. Take, for example, the imagery of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. If you search on the four horsemen of the apocalypse outside of LDS literature, you will see that they almost always say something like this. Four figures in the book of Revelation who symbolize the evils to come at the end of the world. We know that to be untrue. First, this imagery comes from seven verses of scripture in chapter 6 of Revelation. John first sees a white horse with its rider having a bow. The second horse was red, who represents war because it says that he will take peace from the earth. Third is a black horse with a rider holding balances in his hand representing famine. The final horseman is death, who rides a pale horse. Thankfully, Joseph Smith received section 77 of the Doctrine and Covenants. See, each of these horsemen enter a scene as the seals are opened in the book or scroll that was given to John. The first seal is opened and then the first horseman appears. Joseph Smith clarifies that each of these seals represent a 1,000 year period, the first seal representing the first 1,000 years of the Earth's history, or about 4,000 BC to 3,000 BC. The second seal is the next 1,000 years, or 3,000 BC, to about 2,000 BC, and so forth. Therefore, we get the benefit in the church from modern-day revelation of understanding that these four horsemen of the apocalypse are all in the past and not in the future. Several LDS student and other gospel manuals reference Elder Bruce R. McConkie's thoughts around what these images represent, which he describes in the life and teachings of Jesus and his apostles. The white horse could mean victory, a bow warfare, and the crown meaning conquering, and Elder McConkie believes this could be Enoch's day. The second horseman riding a red horse could be bloodshed through war and destruction. Elder McConkie stated that he thought this represented Noah's day. The third horseman represents famine, where the balances represents a high price of food. This occurred during Abraham's dispensation. The fourth horseman is death, riding a pale horse. This could represent the nations that persecuted Israel for the 1,000 years prior to Christ's birth, which include Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. While these events and horsemen are all in the past, we do have John's writing about similar events that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. However, all of these are in the seventh final seal prior to the Lord's return. This confuses some people because they believe, and I even remember being taught this as a student, that Christ's second coming opens the seventh seal, the 7,000th year, and that is when the millennium starts. That isn't exactly true. See, Revelation chapter 8 includes the chapter heading which states, John sees fire and desolation poured out during the seventh seal and preceding the second coming. This makes it clear that desolation is poured out during the seventh seal, but precedes the second coming. This can get confusing for people because they believe that the seventh seal also matches the beginning of the millennium. I've put together other videos on these topics, one about the final plagues prior to the second coming, another one about the famine for the three and a half years prior to Christ's return, and one that's on the great earthquake. Remember that in the end, God wins, Christ wins, the righteous who were protected from all these calamities win, and the apocalypse is a story of the plan of salvation, a story of hope. The apocalypse is a book with a happy ending for those who are following Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.